Welcome. I've done a number of previous videos on AppCacher NG, and in this video I'm going to be installing it on a QNAP NAS using their container station, which is like Docker. So I'll put a link in the description of my previous videos I've done on AppCacher NG. So what AppCacher NG is, it's an app package manager cache. So if you have an Ubuntu or Raspberry Pi or Linux Mint system on your network, you can point it to the cache to cache package downloads. So say you have three Ubuntu desktops, you can point them all to the cache. If one of the systems updates through the cache, then the next time a system goes to update using those same packages, it will download them from the cache as opposed to pulling them from the internet. I find this is also helpful if you're a developer and use virtual machines and you often build new systems. This makes that process go a lot faster. So I'm logged into my QNAP NAS and the first thing I want to do is create a folder. So I'll go to File Station. So you can go onto the volume you want to store your cache on. I'll click on Container here. I'll go down here and right click and say New Create Folder. I'll just call this apt-cacher-ng. I'll hit OK. So I can close that now. Next, you'll want to go to Container Station. So if you don't have Container Station installed already, you'll want to go to the App Center and install it. So I'll open that up. Next, I'll go to Create on the left side here. It says Search Images, so I'll type app-cacher-ng. So there's also a software called App Cacher without the ng on the end. And I find App Cacher NG is better because it works with multiple systems. So you can use it with Ubuntu, Raspberry Pi, Linux Mint all at the same time. And there won't be crossover issues between the packages. So we found the search result we're expecting. It's Samersbin App Cacher NG. I'll click on Create. Next, I want to click Advanced Settings. I'll click Network. And under Host here, I want to change this to 3142, or add it as 3142. We'll leave the container and the protocol the same. Under Device, we don't have anything. Under Shared Folder, you want to go to the middle section here. It says Volume from Host, and I'll hit Add. And it says Host Path. I'll click on that, and then I'll choose App Cacher NG. I'll click on the Mount Point. That'll be forward slash var, forward slash cache, forward slash app dash cacher dash ng. I'll hit create. It's showing us a summary. Then I can hit OK. And if I go to overview, we'll see this container running. So to confirm it's running, I'll open up a tab and I'll put in the IP address of the QNAP NAS and then colon 3142. I'll hit enter and we have this page come up. And this is like an admin page for the App Cacher NG. So now that it's set up, we can set up a client. So I'm logged into a Ubuntu system here on my terminal. I'm SSH'd into it, and I want to point this to the QNAP NAS. So what I want to type is sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash apt forward slash apt dot conf dot d forward slash zero zero apt proxy. I'll hit enter. I'll type in my password. And if you want to see that path, you can see it here in this section. And I'll also have a link in the description of my website where you can find these commands. So you could copy and paste this here. And we want to add this line. So I'll copy that over to my terminal. I'll paste it in. And we want to change this IP address to the IP address of our NAS. So there we have it. I'll type Control O to save, Control X to exit. And now I'll type sudo space app space update, and it should pull that from the cache. Okay, that worked. So I'll go back in here now and I'll change it so it's wrong. So I'll just change the IP address or the port. I'll change the port. And you'll see here it says it could not connect. I'll hit Control C. I just wanted to show you that so you know what to look for if you have an error. So in that case, you need to make sure you don't have any errors on this config. And now it should run. So let's say I was installing the Nginx web browser on here. If I installed it on here, it would ask the cache for it. The cache would download it from the internet and store it locally, and then it would download it to this machine. That might actually slow it down for that one instance. I don't know it's a huge slowdown. But then if you go to another machine later and install Nginx, 
it will pull it directly from the cache. So it'll be a lot faster. So this is great for people that tinker with systems a lot. It would be good for a lab and a school that has a lot of Linux machines that are updating. This can really optimize your network. I'm going to show you one more thing here. I'll clear the screen. I'll type in cd space forward slash etc forward slash apt forward slash apt dot conf dot d forward slash. I'll type ls. This is an Ubuntu server build. And when I built it, I added the cache when I was installing. So there's a screen that says add the proxy. So what that does is that stores it in this 90 curtain dash app proxy file. So I commented those out for this video. So if you've already set it up when you're installing and for some reason you need to change it, you can change it in this file. You can also add the cache when you're installing from a graphical environment. It's a little trickier and one of the links I put down in the description will tell you how to do that. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.